Welcome once again to your world of Reg. I'm Danny Bradbury, and I'm here with Trevor Pot, our itinerant uh, sys admin from Edmonton. Uh, now, the last time we spoke, Trevor had been installing VDI uh, for a client of his, and had learned a number of really, uh, really useful lessons from the whole experience. So, I think we're going to kick off with that. Trevor, talk about what you learned from rolling out all those VDI units, and uh, and how you're applying it now. Well. One of the more interesting issues that we've run across is a uh, virtual machine density issue related to networking. The systems that we deployed were actually powerful enough to do just about any of the processing that you could uh, possibly ask of them. But we were unaware at the time of exactly how much the end users were making use of media audio, video, that sort of thing, that they were streaming during the day to uh, have a more enjoyable workplace. And as soon as you started getting uh, 20, 30 users per system, the dual gigabit Ethernet mix were simply not enough. And so um, the bandwidth was in the or the sorry, the bottleneck was in network bandwidth, and and because users uh, usage patterns for their machines didn't didn't match your expectations or exceeded what you expected, uh, you started to see things choke. Well, we did. Uh, I mean, we certainly had storage and uh, file delivery and all of that uh, segregated off in their own giggy X, but bringing across just the display, the RDP portion of this alone. Uh, blew away just about any of our uh, previous calculations. I mean, we had figured at any given point there might be two out of 30 people who were streaming audio or streaming video, um, and that just didn't turn out to be the case. I, I mean, multimedia is obviously a lot more prevalent than we had thought. Um, a minor upgrade in monitors can make is another thing to uh, bear in mind. I mean, if, if you're designing your system and you're do creating all your baselines uh, just before people go out and buy a whole bunch of new monitors, you're going to need to redo those baselines because they're pulling a lot more pixels across. Um, and it's the sort of thing that, especially when you're putting in uh, virtual systems or you know, setting up uh, any sort of cloud, anything that, that relies on bringing a display across the network. Um, these are the sort of things that you have to make your customers aware of because they will go out and do things like buy new monitors without telling you. So how much do you have to actually change or enforce stricter uh, corporate IT policies when you're doing this kind of thing? And, and how, how do you find the balance between enforcing stricter policies and giving users the freedom that they want? Because, of course, you're going to get a lot of users who are already kicking back at VDI from the get-go because they're worried about precisely this sort of thing, you know, being constrained in, in their computing experience. I really wish that there was a simple answer to that sort of question. IT doesn't set corporate policy anymore. In far too many companies, uh, we are seeing the consumerization of IT, which is right at the forefront of taking away any ability IT may have had to actually set or enforce policy. Uh, policy is now a multi-stakeholder item in which IT's considerations are one of many. Users are no longer willing to live in a world where they are told which systems they can use and what configurations they can play with. They want any device at any time from any place, and it's up to you to deliver. So that being the case, if if you can't bend the users to your will and, and get them to fit around your new VDI system, how do you bend your system around the users? How do you actually plan for the, the, the capacity that you think you're going to need and then and then all the extra capacity that, that you will actually need in real life? Well, part of this is accepting that 
that you can't quite get away with some of the traditional technologies that you're used to. Um, the difference between gigabit Ethernet and 10 gig Ethernet is a lot of dollars, and it's something that a lot of sysadmins don't really want to put the money into. We would much rather take that and put it into the things that have traditionally made the difference, uh, a faster processor or more RAM, stuff that quite frankly doesn't have as much relevance anymore. I mean, usage of computers is changing. And along with that, where the money gets directed, it is changing as well. We have to be able to objectively stand back, look at how the systems are going to be used, and design them based on the usage, not based upon what we would like and what has traditionally been the case. Perfect. Okay, Trevor, that's great. Well, listen, thanks very much for taking us through that and um, and and for for telling, giving us yet another uh, example of, uh, of of one of the challenges, one of the hurdles that people are going to face when they when they put together these video systems. Um, is there anything you want to wrap up with? Um, yeah, I, I I'd, I'd like to make a note that even if for now your particular organization can get away with setting a policy and forcing people to live within it, that's not going to last for long. You might be able to squeak by this refresh cycle by staying with your old one gig E and having some very strict and ardent IT policies to, to wrap yourself and live within that. But by the next refresh cycle, it won't be true. The uh, advent of cloud computing and even, believe it or not, tablets have really made a difference in the public consciousness and their perception of IT. So they're going to work around you. And that is the death of any form of security that you may have had on your network. Yeah, security and and capacity management. You know, if, if if users can figure out another way to to get around a capacity constraint or a usage constraint, you know, whether it's you know sort of punching out to some, you know, some some VPN proxy or something, then then they'll do it, and and you'll just end up with them circumnavigating any controls you put in, and and uh, sort of over over utilizing your capacity regardless. So you might as well just let them do it, keep the goodwill, and 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 maintain some form of control and monitoring. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, thanks very much, Trevor. Speak to you again soon.